Greetings again, everyone. We're still uh, talking about uh, applying nonviolence to rid mankind of the scourge of war. And uh, I talk a lot in the following sections, pages 2, 12 and following, about our culture. As a friend of mine said some years ago, we have a war economy, a war president, and a war culture. And it's particularly the culture that I'd like to focus on. Somebody recently said about um, the president-elect, uh, I'm talking to you uh, toward the end of 2016, said that this candidate is an indictment of our character. And what I said in response to that is, no, that would give you the sense that we can't do anything about it. But really, it's an indictment of our culture. What in our character are we going to cultivate? And uh, so I talk a good bit here about uh, how we talk. Uh, what kind of language do we use? Uh, we constantly humanize war making and, and its machinery, like I talk about the atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They were called Little Boy and Fat Man. They were made living, cute beings, people, whereas the human beings who lived in the city, they were dehumanized to targets. So there are many ways in which uh, habits of language have made it possible for us to do something which inwardly we find completely abhorrent, which is to perpetrate mass slaughter on other human beings. Now, it isn't easy at all to imagine how we are going to change a culture. And since writing Search for Nonviolent Future, I, I've hit upon a kind of condensation or uh, zooming in on key elements, which I will share with you now. These are not in the book. So there is something about our culture which can give us a leverage to change that culture. And that is, what is its core narrative? Its fundamental description of reality, its concept of what is a human being. So we want to change the narrative. And in order to change the narrative, as I've just hinted, the core of that narrative, we don't have to go into a whole explanation of where the universe came from, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The core of the narrative, in, term, in practical terms, is what it tells us about who we are. And to zoom in one final step, the fundamental thing that we need to know about who we are, the one thing which, if you were in an elevator with somebody and wanted to change his or her mind uh, in two floors, of that elevator ride, the fundamental thing would be what I was saying earlier about Adel Termos and human nature, that we have the capacity for nonviolence, which is a double capacity. It's the capacity to master one's negative impulses and offer nonviolence. And on the other hand, it's the capacity to respond to nonviolence when it's offered. Um, right now, for example, there is a big standoff uh, happening at S uh, Standing Rock, Oseti Sakoin, uh, Dakota camp in North, in North Dakota. And a number of the police who have been ordered to break up the uh, blocks of demonstrators and so forth have handed in their badges and said, I cannot do this, and walked off the job. I'm not sure how many, but, but some have done that. I'll just add one other thing for now, and that is the discussion that you'll find on page 213 about labeling, that the way the journalistic uh, language presents us constantly with the case of violence is, was it a terrorist act or not? You know, what kind of label should we put on it? But they never, never say this was an act of violence. Why is there so much violence? What can we do about it? Thank you very much.